to start okay. by welcoming Sarah Clark to the show. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Laura. It's good to be here. Thank you. It's great to have you. Welcome. Um, you posted on Instagram about your unusual guru. Uh, he has four legs. <laughs> So if you, you could, see me smiling. I'm like, yeah. oh, yes. <laughs> if you yes. could tell us his name and what he's taught you. Oh, yes. Okay. So it's my dog. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he's this <laughs> little cute white dog with like a black patch around his right eye. Or is it his left eye? I should know this as his dog mom. But, um, <laughs> you know, I've I've always loved training wild animals. And it comes from like a lineage of like my, my grandmother trained fish, had to swim up to her um, at her. She had like a lake and they would notice her shadow and they would come up. She trained lizards and geckos. They lived in Miami. Um, you know, she's, she's trained cats to like walk up ladders and slide down them. Like it's just doves really? to sit in her hand. Yeah. And so, you know, I come from that. And so I've, I've trained chipmunks in my family backyard to come up and eat out of my hands and all the things. So I say all that to say, um, before moving to the house I'm in now, I also trained these, these beautiful doves to eat out of my hand here in Grenada. Um, because I was finally able to reconnect to nature coming from New York City. So when I moved mm. to this property, there was this little cute white dog that was scared of everything. Uh, and I slowly began to reel him in because mm. you just can't, he's just so cute. And um, I would feed him and he would sleep on my porch. They call it a veranda here in yes. Grenada. And um, slowly but surely, he I earned his trust. He gained my trust. Um, and he has taught me how powerful love, consistency, and safety is mm. and how we all need that and how powerful it is for us to heal when we get the medicine that we need. Yeah. And so, you know, he's also teaching me how to parent in a weird way. Like even today, I <laughs> he's such a smart dog and he needs attention and he'll stare at me from sitting outside to see if we're going to go for a walk. Um, and there are days when I'm like, I need a break, you know? And I'm like, is this how parenting is? You know, you just need a break from your child. Um, but then we yes. had a great time, right? You're like, uh, yeah. And, um, it's just like unconditional love and mm. we're continuing to, our relationship is continuing to blossom. To the Beautiful. point where I'm like, maybe we're almost ready to go on an airplane together. I don't know yet. We'll see. Wow. He's, he's still a little scared of, of sound. So, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a big next step, though. But Huge. Yes. You need so we'll to see. follow. Yeah, you have to follow Sarah on Instagram and, and see this love affair that she has. <laughs> what, what's you know, and I'm... His name is Prince. I don't think I That's answered right. that. His name is Prince. A little yeah. girl um, named him Prince. She was a neighbor. This was before I moved here. She originally named him Cinderella because he came from like a rain gutter. Like that's where they found him crawling out of. Oh. And they realized he was a boy. And so they named him Prince instead. Prince. Yeah. And I, I didn't change it because he's a little, he's princely. So I, well, I left it. That's funny because I'm picturing you like one of those Disney princesses with the animals eating out of your hand and yes, <laughs> like yes. following you around. Like, I mean, yes. you know, that's that's a loaded thing, a Disney princess now. But but that it aspect is, right? of it. <laughs> yes. That part. They'd be like, wait that a second. Part. Yeah, yes. that part. Um, yes. I mean, my next mission is hummingbirds. They okay. come around. They, they, they become, you know, they, they're getting closer and closer. So right. I just need to consistently sit outside. But the fact yes. that I have that proximity to nature now yes. is so amazing. It's well, so amazing. And, and that's what we're going to talk about because the juxtaposition of what, what it was like for you and then what it's like now. Absolutely. But thank you for that. Yeah. And I'm Laura Cathcart Robbins. This is the only one in the room. But mm -hmm. I'm never the only one in this room because, as usual, my boyfriend, producer, and co-host, Scott Slaughter, who I call Hun, is here as well. Hi, honey. Hey, honey. <laughs> um, so like I said, we are talking to model and yoga instructor Sarah Clark. Do you have any other identifiers, Sarah? Oh, my gosh. Model is like, 
even though I know, I've been I photographed know, I know. so much, you know? Um, and I need to just step into that uh, because even here I became like the face of a makeup brand. So I'm like, okay, Sarah, See? just yeah. just own that, that the camera likes you. Just own it. But yes. um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a meditation, yoga, and mindfulness teacher. That's, yes, that's you like, are. Yes, that's you my are. thing. That's my jam. Thank you. Yes. Um, and so we also have to shout out Rebecca. And this is a really funny thing. Rebecca yes. is... My literary agent. Okay, the secret's um, coming out. <laughs> She's coming been out. in your life for a long time, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, loves you. She connected us. And yes. I've never pronounced her last name out loud. Same. So, not so, in front of her. Not right. in front of her. So we think, I Until think now. maybe it's Gradinger, but you say Gradinger maybe. Gradinger, Gradinger, yeah. It could be Gradinger. It could um, be Gradinger. <laughs> Or Gradinger. Honey, honey, I'm, I'm, Gradinger. Proud of you. I'm proud of you for putting it out there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I always like to have people's names right before I mention it. So, Rebecca, Me too. you'll need to school us on the pronunciation of your last name, yeah. but we love you. We should and... love you so much. We should do a whole show on on people last names. Names. <laughs> you, names you just can't quite get right that have multiple. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's like a journalist's nightmare because you should right. know the name and right. the spelling and the pronunciation. So Absolutely. sorry. Sorry, Rebecca. We love you. Yes. Yeah. It has nothing to diminish our love for you. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. At all. Only just more curiosity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. More curiosity. Yes. Um, all right. So, so I, I, I want to talk about your life in New York. Um, before we talk about what your life is like in Grenada, mm. and um, which is not Grenada, it's Grenada. We know that Correct. pronunciation. Yeah, I mean, so many don't, and I did not until you know ah, my friend yes. who lives here told me. Yeah, it's Grenada. Grenada, G R E N A D A. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Um, so I have down here that you were modeling. Um, you were ending a relationship um, with, with someone, um, and, and did your father pass away the, all that yeah. same year? That was all Pretty happening. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just tell me, talk, talk to me about those things and what your life looked like there. Mm. My life was incredibly full and very busy. Um, I never thought that I would be a full-time yoga teacher. I moved to New York City to be in television post-production. I was freelance for HBO and then moved on to True TV as they were changing from court TV to True TV. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I was in that world and uh, but had always practiced yoga. So yoga became my calling and I took a risk and I left corporate America to pursue my studies of yoga to just to see what it would unlock in me, not thinking teaching full-time would be it. Right. And I nannied, I waitressed after realizing I actually, I love teaching. I did all the, the, the odd, odd things, not even odd, but the, I did other jobs in order mm -hmm. to support myself while building a yoga career, if you will. Um, and I, I don't know if it's the Gemini in me. Um, we're known as like public speakers and, you know, we love to talk and communicate and all these things, but, and there was, there was also a need coming from an all white background where I was the only one all the time. I had a deep desire to be seen and to be heard in the wellness space where someone who looked like me wasn't reflected. And as I built my career, um, it was, it was my life. It was what I lived and breathed. It saved me from, uh, healing from an eating disorder my freshman year in college, um, just by finding my breath. So yoga is something that I know saves lives. And clearly people resonated with that to the point where uh, between 2018 and 2019, I was on three major magazine covers, Prevention Magazine, Yoga Journal Twice, um, and even the cover, the cover of a, a, a catalog for a big retreat center known as Kripalu in the Berkshires of Massachusetts. Um, I was signed as a uh, basically the only black yoga teacher on a really big uh, online yoga streaming platform in LA. Um, so I was flying out there and then I was uh, signed as a global yoga ambassador for a really big athletic apparel brand. So I was traveling to China, to Japan, to Vancouver, to LA, to everywhere. And then also teaching in New York City. And this is these are things that I wanted, um, 
But at the same time, I realized, and this is always a topic of conversation, like is, does success equal happiness? Mm -hmm. And so in the midst of all of this, um, my patriarch of a father, six foot four guy, uh, developed brain cancer and he was, you know, seemingly healthy. And my family and I went through an eight month, uh, eight month battle of witnessing this big man dwindle away. And I remember hoping that he would take a holistic route and he wouldn't do brain surgery and all those things. But I think he was very focused on, well, if I do the brain surgery, then I'll be, um, I'll be able to do trial studies. Like the first was to like get the tumor removed, but then he became too weak to do any trials. And so just, just seeing the medical, I could go on, this could be a whole other topic, but yes, my father passed, my hand was on his heart as he passed away. Um, and it was quite profound. Yeah, it was quite profound. Um, and I think, you know, people don't really tell you how your whole life and family dynamic will shift when, someone passes, especially a main person in, in the, the, the familial dynamic and everything changed. And within that, I was beginning to realize I was also in a relationship, a narcissistic abusive relationship. Um, and I had the guts to leave and I had to leave. Mm-hmm. I couldn't come to a peaceful agreement with him. Like it was me concerned about my safety if I moved out while he was there, I had to go. Um, and so, yeah, so that was like the tipping point of my whole life changing. Wow. That is, um, first of all, thank you for sharing that about your dad and about Mm -hmm. having your hand on his heart while he passed. I mean, that is so powerful and it made me teary Mm. and, um, I, I'm sending you my comfort for your loss. Thank you. (sighs) Um, And that sounds like a huge life you were living then. What's really interesting to me is that it's the yoga industry. And I feel like yoga shouldn't be an industry. (laughs) Like it's, it's a spiritual practice. It's a way of life, but there Mm -hmm. is this in this industry part. It's like, you know, show business. It's a business. People think about, you know, the arts and, but it's really a business and yoga has an industry and you mentioned, because um, I want to hear more about being a Black woman in that industry, and I want you to talk about what your experience was while you were the brand ambassador for that top fitness brand. Um, that won't and also, be named right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that won't yeah. be named. But also no. talk about what an ambassadorship is. Like, what do you do as the brand ambassador? Yeah, sure. So this was a tier where I was salaried for them. And I, my job was to represent the brand and teach for their store communities around the world. So, you know, they fly us here and there. Um, And, you know, I had uh, had a relationship with the brand, ironically, like 10 years before when I first began my yoga career, I actually worked in one of their stores and it was not a good experience, uh, Mm. let alone retail. You know, it just wasn't my vibe, you know, shout out to anyone who's thriving in retail. It just, it was not, it was not for me. Um, But I did it. And later on, I became a store ambassador for them. So my picture was on the wall. I got like a, you know, free clothes from them to wear and would be a part of events. And then because my experience was just lousy, in my opinion, um, I noticed even back then how they, um, Oh gosh, they loved the black men that they interacted with. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the black women, it was a very different story. And of course I was one of the only black women, uh, a part of the brand. Um, And I just swore them off. Like I didn't wear their clothes. I didn't, I did, I just didn't wear anything, which is tough because it's a major brand in the yoga world. But I was like, nope. I'm done with them. And then, you know, 10 years later, they start courting me and they're, they're talking all these things about, you know, DIY, diversity and inclusion and anti-racism work that they've done and wanting to diversify and bring in stronger voices to support their brand. And they love my work, yada, yada, yada. And this was the corporate level. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, so they courted me and this was during my dad's sickness. So I wasn't fully in my, the best state of mind to make the right decision, but I negotiated with them a decent contract that they tried to twist and shift throughout the, the time I was with them. But needless to say, I signed up with them and had amazing experiences abroad. Oh my gosh, phenomenal. But the people I directly worked with were in my opinion, very abusive and very mm. manipulative. Uh, and when I've talked to other Black women associated with the brand, they have had similar stories to the point where there are stories that reporters are trying to get out there about the brand because of the abuse that they've noticed is consistent amongst Black people, let alone Black women. So I, wow. I hope more stories are told because they're very good at smoothing things over. But it is a toxic brand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry mm -hmm. that, that you had that experience. I really am. It's, I mean, it's okay. It is okay, I'm, but it, yeah. And it no, isn't right. No, right. I mean, I have learned so much. Um, I've toughened up in so many ways. Um, even how I will negotiate contracts moving forward is very different than I did then. Yes. I've learned a lot, yeah. even through the pain, you know, I've learned so much. So yeah. Well, and yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, what, what kind of launched this podcast was an article I wrote about being the only black person at a 600 person retreat, not a yoga retreat, a writer's retreat, um, which was uh, in some ways a painful experience for me. But the good that's come from that and what I've learned from that yes. uh, definitely outweighs the, the, the discomfort and the pain that I felt during those three days. Which is interesting. Yeah. 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 How, but I think you have to be in the right state of mind to become the witness to what's happening and how you're feeling and the Love pain. That. Yes. You know, and then through that, you get all these downloads and wisdom to help mm -hmm. move you forward and get clear on what's acceptable and, and what's not. Yeah. To the point where you wrote an article that was widely received. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and people resonated with it. Yes. I, I thought just black people, but lots of people, all different backgrounds, they understood what that's like to be the marginalized person in the room, to feel like the only one in the room. And, yes. you know, and so we're looking at you on the cover of magazines. We're looking at you representing this brand. And the assumption is, yes, they've done their work because look at this beautiful black woman with her natural hair, mm -hmm. you know, representing this brand. Did you have your yeah. hair like that then? Uh -huh. I've had this haircut for like 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, I mean, it's, yeah. you're incredibly gorgeous, but like that would make me happy. Right. But then yeah. there's the behind the scenes. The behind where you're, the scenes. Yeah. Where you're having this experience that you're not allowed to talk about at the time. Yes. Um, I felt constantly under attack by them. Even my Instagram posts were questionable to them. You know, uh, every little thing I did, what, like, I, I remember I did a, a shoot with them for a winter jacket and we, we filmed in New York city in August, which is fine, whatever I get it. Um, but there was, you know, and they asked, okay, we're coming to you with our team. Where do you want to film? And I gave them a list of places and we went to one of the, the yoga studio and then we got in the car for the next destination. It was right in front of my apartment building. And they gave me like no notice. No, they didn't ask permission if they could film in my neighborhood um, mm. it, you know, and it, it was always like, well, other people are okay with this. So right. you should be too, yeah. you should be happier with the brand. Um, although they're not respecting like my need for privacy, you know, yes. in a Brooklyn neighborhood, that's gentrifying. I don't want a camera crew right. around yeah. like no, that, you totally. know? Yes. Um, so it was a lot of gaslighting that I dealt with, with, the, mm -hmm. with the brand that I found happened to a lot of other people. And so that's the thing. It's like, in front, it's like, wow, Sarah Clark, you know, look at all that you're doing. And behind the scenes, it's like my anxiety is rising. Right. Um, it's, it's almost a feeling that I had when I was in corporate and similar vibes of like the only black woman in the space and not getting the proper raises, but doing the work that I, you know, without the title yes. um, and feeling guilty in a sense to my fellow black yoga teachers um, showing them one side of the coin while not being able to really express what's actually happening, you wow. know? And, and this yeah. was across the board with almost every company I worked for. 
and while helping them out and their image out, you know, right. while I, I'm feeling like they brought me in almost a stomp on my spirit, which is very interesting. Right. And, or, and, and to use you, whatever that looked like yes. at the time yes. was just not caring if your spirit is squelched or stomped on or whatever. Exactly. This is important for us as a brand right now to have a face like this. Yes. Whew. Yes. Yes. And when you love what you do, mm -hmm. it's it can be very easy to be manipulated if you don't have the right team, which I did not have at the time. Right. And I'm still building. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So we get to February of 2020 mm -hmm. and you decide, because you loved a vacation in the winter, right? Oh my gosh. It was, I mean, I went as a solo black female backpacker. I backpacked over 20 countries by myself. Really? Yeah. I'm yeah. learning so much about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I would Airbnb my rent stabilized apartment, which I wasn't supposed to do, but I would do it anyway. Yeah. I was able to sub out my classes. I had a good enough reputation where they were like, that's fine. Go for a couple months, come back. And I would travel, you know, South wow. Africa, uh, South America, from literally from Mexico through South America. I backpacked through India, Thailand, um, just, yeah, Southeast Asia, basically, Cambodia. Amazing. Yeah, I loved, I loved it so much. Yeah. So, and then I got in a relationship yeah. where, right. you know, going away for more than five days was a big deal. Not for you, that relationship, even though you stayed in it for a while, but that's I did. totally in opposition of what you're telling me you are, yeah. right? Yeah. Your wings were clipped, as it were. Yes. Oh, and they were getting clipped more and more and more. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Oh, to the point where it's like, I need you to slow down and settle down. This is, you know, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or like, why can't I go with you? Or, well, if you're flying this way, I'm not going to sit in another seat. That's not fair. Right. Or on a on a on a set, he comes in when he isn't supposed to because it's 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 a it's a local shoot, and every cut that we take, he's chatting up with the cameraman and the producer like he works on the set, you mm -hmm. know. And when I tell him, "Hey, can I need to do this solo?" He gets angry and storms out. You know, it's right. it was that it was yeah. it was that. Yeah, you couldn't have yours. That no. your circle was. It's so important. Someone told that to Scott and I when we first got together that he has his circle, I have my circle, and then we also have our circle together. Yes. And that's that's how the relationship works best. But it was really important that we have our own stuff. And 100. Yeah. I mean, Scott will probably leave here and go on a mountain bike ride around and he goes on surf trips to Bali and to Mexico and um, you know, that's, that's his thing. He, he swims, he communes with nature. Mm -hmm. I'm a lover of the great indoors, you ah, know, <laughs> Yes, cozy I'm up. happiest in like my cozies at my desk. Um, mm -hmm. so, but we also do stuff together. That's the stuff we do together. So I completely understand that. And, um, and you're like this wanderlust in you needed yeah. to be fed. Yes. And, and just seeing, I mean, again, another topic, but just seeing the dynamic between, I mean, I love hearing that you all have a relationship where you can honor your individual needs while still yeah. coming together to yeah. enjoy each other. Um, and I find in a lot of um, heteronormative relationships and maybe even, you know, other, uh, but specifically speaking, male, female, there is a lot of control with the woman and there's a lot of talk around that too. Um, and so I felt like I was the only one, you know, in the room mm -hmm. <laughs> regarding yeah. this relationship and not knowing how abusive it was until we actually went to therapy. So again, through that pain, oh my gosh, my, like my, my boundaries are, are getting phenomenally, they're like, I am growing exponentially because of what I went through. Mm. And, and I think trusting the journey, whether it's painful or beautiful, um, it's, it's going to help your evolution and just yeah. like hold on, hold on and not give up and trust your intuition. It's so important. And that's what I love oh, teaching. Yes. Yes. Especially for women. Because, Especially for women. Yeah. Yes. Our intuition gets sidelined in favor of blank, blank or blank because we yes. don't want to appear, you know, we don't want to be too much or 
too little or, you know, unlikable or whatever that looks like. Absolutely. Um, okay. So February, 2020, you love vacationing. You decide to go to Grenada, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me about that. Cause this is, as we know, February, 2020 is when things started to kind of like boil, they were simmering, right? In not, Italy. Not things even. Were, oh, okay. Go, yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. in China and Italy, like we yes. were hearing like, oh, these are shut, you know, and I remember being February, 2020, like my dad was here and he got really sick and we joked, oh, maybe it's COVID, you oh. know, like not even yep. thinking it could have been real. Right. Um, so tell me about that and your decision to go to Grenada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was bouncing around, you know, just in this transitional period, um, my ambassadorship, the contract ended, um, I ended my contract with um, the yoga platform I was on, I was burned all the way out, all the way out and didn't realize it. Sometimes when you're in it, you're just, you know, you're like a functioning, depressive person, like, I, you know, I'm a highly functioning. Um, and I think that's the case for a lot of a lot of people, let alone a lot of Black American women. Um, and so I was still functioning at a seemingly high level, but absolutely exhausted. New York had been draining me for years. I think the deeper I got into my practices, the more sensitive I became to my environment. Um, so as I'm in this transition, it was either heading back to Mexico for the winter, because I love Mexico so much, or finally going to visit a friend in Grenada a colleague, a yoga teacher who I met in the States. I was supposed to go to her wedding, but my dad was had just gotten out of surgery. So I was like, I can't go that far away from him. Um, so yeah, I decided on Grenada. I booked a one-way ticket. The plan was just like, oh, I'll book my return when I feel like it. Like, I know this is what, how, how luxurious that is. Uh, but, you know, I had saved a lot of money from these contracts. Not a lot. I, I was never paid. I know I wasn't as paid as well as my white counterparts, but mm. I saved enough to have a moment to figure it out and how vital that is. I hope I can provide that one day to someone to just have a moment to breathe. There, there aren't a lot of moments in this capitalistic society to just pause and breathe. Um, but, but in hindsight, I wasn't pausing and breathing. I was still freaking out and ungrounded and not knowing what was next and all the things. So when I came to Grenada, it was beautiful. It was great. My friend and I were having a great time. And then COVID became a reality in the States. Yeah. And it was either me going back to the States. Meanwhile, you know, my I had given up my apartment. I was living with my partner. That's no longer a thing. Definitely moving home. Not a thing. Bless my family, but not a thing. Um, and so I took a risk, you know, uh, and I didn't know how Grenada was going to handle COVID. Their health infrastructure is still growing and developing. Um, so I just, I had to sit down and, and listen to my intuition and meditate and freak out and call my family and call my friends and then sit some more. And the conclusion was internally, I wasn't going anywhere. I was staying. Mm, mm, wow. Yeah. And then, so I want to talk to you about two things. We, I think I told you when you and I talked that we have another guest who's a friend of ours named Lucia Bra Brawley, mm -hmm. who at the same time that you're talking about went to Mauritius, which is an island off the coast of Africa yes. with her husband and their two children. And she ended up doing what you're doing. Um, what wh she stayed, they're still there. Oh, right. Um, what she and I talked about um, was she's a woman of color. She's not black, but being, being not, not being surrounded by folk that I'm sorry, let me rephrase this being one amongst the dominant culture for the first time in her life, right. To be, to feel like she's part of the dominant culture there, as opposed to always feeling like she's the only one. And so I wanted you to talk to me about, and I had that experience. I think I told you when I went to Senegal of just, you know, getting off the plane and driving to the hotel. No, I'm sorry, not even that, because we didn't see much on that drive. But <laughs> but then getting out of the cars and like literally everyone was black, which yeah. was an amazing thing to me. Tell me about, because we talked about being black here in New York City, 
even during your travels as the ambassador for that brand and and in your work with in the yoga industry, talk to me about being black in Grenada and what oh that's like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it it is it is something I'm almost three years into to living here and it is something that I'm still in awe of. Um my exchanges with Grenadians that I don't even know, just, it feels like family. It feels like home. I know other uh, black Americans and even those from the UK and those just who have moved here and have decided yeah. to settle, they feel similarly. Um, there is just something so profoundly healing about being in a space where people look like you, being in a space where police officers wave hello and you're not worried wow. about them behind you, you know, yeah. and just not realizing the alarm systems that constantly go off in the States when you are of color, um, being in survival mode, whether you realize it or not, and what that can do to the body as we, we see happening in, in the black community with the, the different types of um, dis-ease and diseases that we develop. Mm. So, it's done something for my nervous system that I, I didn't know was possible. It's done something for me on a, a cellular level. It's almost yeah. like a homecoming. It's like the ancestors are like, welcome, wow. settle in. Mm. And Grenadians are just so welcoming. They'll tell me I look like someone, you know, and that, like, that just does something to me, not knowing my lineage exactly. Like, I don't know exactly where my family comes from. I, I one day, because my dad was the one who was like, I'm not doing, you know, ancestry because they might like <laughs> use my, my DNA for something, yeah. which probably they do, but, right. uh, I'm curious. I am mm -hmm. because I, I know my ancestors have passed through this place because, you know, Grenada had like, it's a small Island and it had probably, I read somewhere like 80 plantations, active plantations on this Island that you can drive around in three hours. So, I mean, you know, wow. It was, wow. that was, that was what this island was used for as, you know, throughout the Caribbean, throughout the Americas. So anyway, um, I know I have roots here. Yeah. I do. Uh, so yeah, it's just, I feel like I'm, I'm home and I never felt like that in the States. Amazing. You, yeah. you said that your spirit told you to stay there. That's what you meant by that? Like you felt mm -hmm. called, yeah. like there was a calmness about the decision to stay? Yeah. Wow. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a risk taker and it's just, you know, you, you can grow up with folks, your elders saying, you know, don't make a move until you have a plan in place mm -hmm. and sure, you know, that can work for some, but for me, if I have something in me, that's telling me like leaving cushy corporate America to nanny and waitress and work retail to pursue yoga in whatever form I didn't even know while living in a very expensive city that is New York. Right. Like it's just in me. And I'm finding that there's always wings that will spread. Even if they feel clipped at, at, a, at a moment in time, we always have the key to our cage. And if I'm wow. telling others, you know, we do. Um, and it's all, it's a lot of it is, is, is the power of thought as well um, and envisioning. And I've always, especially as a backpacker, I've always envisioned how can I live and, and work somewhere beautiful? How can I live on an island? And that was just always in my mind. And so when I finally got this opportunity that was unplanned, I just, I kind of had to go with it. And then come to find out New York City became the epicenter. Right, right. You know, and yeah, I'm like chilling on an island whose borders are closed, you know, and we're like eating fresh mangoes, you know, well, and sitting then, in the sun. Yeah. And there was that exodus then, right? Because the people yeah. that were trapped in the city, some of them were literally in those mobile, mobile morgues oh, in the street. Yeah. And, yes. and then everybody was looking for space. How do we go? We buy property upstate. We go, you know, down to you know, the rural South, like anywhere to get some space where kids could play or you could be outside. And there you were. Yes. Um, witnessing like it said. all. Yes. And also but, witnessing yeah. like, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
No, I was, I was just going to, but no, finish your thought and then I'll ask you. Okay. Um, also witnessing like the, the racial tension building in the States, uh, witnessing yeah. Black Lives Matter, you know, come to life, just witnessing all of, all of that. And, you know, praying that my family stayed safe while mm. I'm in a, a really safe, like the safest space. It was like, I was in someone's, my mother's womb, you know, it was, wow. I was so safe. I was so yeah. held here while witnessing everything, which was pretty wild. And then also figuring out like, what is my life? What am I doing? Yeah. How am I going to afford my future? I'm not with these big brands anymore. They're, well, they they yeah. didn't treat me well. Like, what does life look like, you know? And that's exactly what I wanted. I was going to ask you next. Like, so mm -hmm. what, first of all, I think like for me as a mom, to keep my kids safe, I want them near me, mm -hmm. right? That's safety. And yeah. so it must have been counterintuitive for your family to know that you were safer there, even though you weren't amongst them or close yeah. to them. Um, and that you were as safe as though you were in the womb. Like, that's a really beautiful <laughs> image to think, like, you know, that someone, um, and, and Scott may talk about this, his, his daughter is um, passing through here right now. She's on her way to Bali. I feel like you mm -hmm. both have a similar spirit. Um, she definitely has the wanderlust. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, we worry because, because she's so far away, not because of what might happen there, but yeah. just, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. hard because it's, it's far away, but I think that's her safe place as well is when she's there. Um, Absolutely. But, but that, that, cause I'm picturing you, you know, you said eating mangoes in the sun, you know, doing your thing. <laughs> what, how do you shift? You've shifted your mind, shifted your mindset where you have serenity, but how do you, um, and success isn't measured the way that it was measured for you when you live in New York, but finance is still finance. So how do you go about um, s figuring out how to make a living? And then what does that look like? Right. Yeah. Cause every, everything changed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, being away from fam, I'm used to that and they've had to get used to that, you know, as I've traveled the world and as a backpacker. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I think they were primed. And then in terms of finances, um, I luckily I was with my, my yoga friend, and so we would do something that we called co-working together. So mm -hmm. we would, you know, sit at, a, at di the dining room table and just work, you know, separately together, brainstorm. Um, so I decided to do online um, workshops that would be like five day workshops. And the first one was called I Can Breathe because from George, George Floyd, I can't breathe. I wanted to just change oh, that because... Goodness. Yeah. You know, words are so powerful. And if as a community we're saying we can't breathe, then we, we can't breathe. And so I just wanted to have an opportunity for people to come together, donation-based, and breathe. So it's five days of different breath techniques, of journaling, of conversation. Um, and so I did all these series of I cans. I can breathe. I can meditate. I can manifest. I can, you know... Flow, I think, was one because I teach vinyasa flow. Um, so it turned into this whole thing that hopefully will transform into a book as well and chapters in a book. Um, and so that's what sustain sustained me. And I think because of the Black Lives Matter movement, more people were um, wanting to support mm. Black-owned businesses. And so yes. that really helped me stay afloat during that time. And it also empowered me to know that I can do this on my own. I don't need big brands. And I mean, I had some big brands come after me right before I moved and during I moved, while I moved, well, not knowing I was moving, moving. Right, right. And I said no to all of it, all of it. And sometimes, you know, there has been, reg not regret, I don't believe in regret, but there have been moments where I'm like, maybe I should have just said yes. Um, but at the same time, taking risks and seeing what can unfold and manifest when you have faith in yourself, your vision and your truth. And my truth mm -hmm. was, I need to do this on my own. I don't want my work to be owned by anyone. 
And if my work is owned by a company, it's got to be an excellent and outstanding contract. And if it's not, I'm not doing it and I will figure it out. And I, I continue to figure it out. You know, I continue to take risks and it's not always cushy. It's not always glamorous. It still might look that way because I'm on a stunning island, but there's been times where I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make it. And then things come together or I get a really awesome contract to work for like a corporate company and, you know, teach them meditation. I'm actually flying to the States at the end of January to continue teaching, but now in person with this, this big company. So, but on my own terms. Yes. And, and that is like the next chapter of my life. I want things to be on my own terms and with, with that support other people finding their own intuition so that they can rewrite their terms as well. It's really important to do that. Two things. Mm. Three. First, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just wow. That's amazing. Aww. I can breathe is everything. Right? Everything. It brought instant tears to my eyes when you said that. Once I, mm. once you explained it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And three, it must be a book. There must be a book. Mm. You've, you, you've got an agent and Rebecca. <laughs> I mean, no, them. listen, she's like, just right, Sarah. She's just been telling right. me this for over yes. a year. And I'm like, I will. But no, yes. this year is the year. You this year must. is the year. Must. Yeah. yeah. I have a title and everything. It's this is the year. Okay. You don't yeah. want to share it yet. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's catchy. It's fun. I'm excited. All right. Well, yeah. when, when you're promoting that, you'll come back on and we'll talk about that. It'd be an honor. Do you get lonely or bored? I get lonely. I never get bored. And I, I love my practices because they allow me to stay curious about life. Even if I'm depressed, even if I'm sad, it's like, okay, what, what's behind that sadness? And what do I need? What do I, what am I seeking? What do I need to call in? How do I need to change my thoughts so that um, I shift my state? Or how do I ask for help if the practices aren't doing what they need to do? And perhaps the practices are letting me know, no, actually, Sarah, ask for help. Um, I get lonely in terms of finding a partner. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also experiencing like, God, I love men so much, but the audacity of men is like, I feel like has reached an all time high. Mm -hmm. And I see women on TikTok talking about this too, and friends around me who are single. So I know it's not just me, but I also know there's things that I need to heal more to, continue to attract a high vibrational being into my life. And until that happens, I am, I have, oh my, Laura, my community here is dreamy. Mm. My, mm. my friends here are family. Yeah. My friends here have taught me how to ask for help. Um, how to just how to feel safe again, um, in a communal setting and in an intimate setting, even though it's, it's, um, you know, it's not romantic. Uh, I can't right. think, what is it? It's, uh, What's the word when it's not Platonic? romantic? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and they all look like me. Mm. You know, oh, they're all, yes. you know, it's just, and they're all so brilliant. Mm. So, um, so even though I have moments of loneliness, like when I'm carrying in my five gallon bottle of water, you know, right. I'm like, I need a man to do this, but I'm strong enough and I do it, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would, I would love, I would love a, a really wonderful partner. Um, and I don't know where my equal is and many of my women friends don't know either, but this world is abundant. And so I'm going to keep focusing on myself and my community. And if that person appears, they do. And if they don't, I've had a, I, my life is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the ups and downs of it, my life, because I take risks and because I'm continuously reminded that there's always a net to catch me. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to be all right. And I trust my journey. Mm. I trust my journey. When you said calling in a high vibrational being, mm -hmm. I pictured at the top of the conversation where we were talking about the hummingbirds oh. because they're, you know, they have that, that vibrating that, you know, yes. that really rapid beat. And I just pictured it looking like that. Um, maybe it'll happen at the same time. <laughs> maybe we're like birders together. Yeah. <laughs> It is yeah. not, yeah, he's saying not me, not me, but she's <laughs> saying her partner, hon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> her partner and her might be birders together. You never know. You never know. You never um, know. 
Hey, Sarah, tell me, um, tell me what, where people can find you. Hmm. So this is, yes. So they can find me on Instagram. Uh, just my yes, name, Sarah Clark. Yes, yes, they can. No H on Sarah, no E on Clark yoga. Right. Um, they can find me very soon on a new website. I'm kind of like hiding because, because when I'm more out there, more work comes my way and mm. I'm scared of what that looks like. And it just, it changes things if I start traveling again. So I think I've been hiding, but you can find me on my website, everyone. It's going to come soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me on Apple Music under my mm-hmm. name. Uh, I signed with them. So I'm doing meditations. They're, they built this new platform called Wellbeing. Um, so I'm working with them as well. And I own my work, which has been a goal, you know, coming from the other side of yeah. everyone owning my stuff and not paying me enough. I own my work and that feels really cool. Um, and you can find me teaching yoga retreats here in Grenada. Yes. And there's going to be a podcast coming. There's things happening. I'm just on the other side of like, okay, I live here. This is my life. What else can I offer the world that also brings me joy? Just like you. Yeah. 2023. 2023. Yes. Looking to be. Yes. I am. I am just really, I don't know. I'm an, I'm awed by you and Mm. Right I, I, impress sounds um impress isn't the right word but the i i'm i'm filled up by you mm, it's wow. it's a really lovely feeling to see somebody so beautiful um just the spirit and and obviously physically you're beautiful but just like this beautiful spirit emanating out of you living this life that you didn't even dream about no. Um, or permanently, right? Like right. you, you dreamed of traveling here and there, but to make that your life, yeah. and then, um, living with the understanding that you will be taken care of, and then taking actions as though you will be taken yeah. care of. What? Yeah, Who and that's that? what I want to. I, I, I'm trying to explore that more. Like hashtag hashtag soft life, which a lot of women are, a lot, black women in particular, I've seen that a lot on social. But how do we still live within this capitalism while doing things differently? Mm-hmm. How soft can we be in our lives while still calling in abundance? Okay. And that's what I want to explore this 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 year of how can I still rest while um, having what I need to rest if yeah. that makes sense i'm glad you I'm over the hustle that hashtag culture. oh i'm sorry yes <laughs> i've seen that hashtag i was like what does that mean <laughs> soft life yes. Yes. yeah just ease, ease. yeah all ease. right and well, trust we, and trust mm-hmm. we we are gonna yeah. leave it there then mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. thank you so much it's an honor thank you so yeah. much laura and to rebecca as well for connecting us yes yes, yes. yeah to be continued when the book comes out okay 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 and congrats to your book coming out oh thank you thank you Mm, yes available for pre-order now (laughs) stash my life in hiding um thank you thank you sarah Mm -hmm. thank you sarah pleasure thank you hi i'm sarah clark and i'm the only one who decided to take a risk